be? Are you nervous that I'm going to be, be better than you? Than you? I, I am, actually. Are you really? Yeah, a little bit. I'm just going to take my time. Okay, well, so fun. we're painting each other, right? Yes. Okay, fine. My six years of art school have all boiled down to this. My GCSE art. <laughs> I dropped out of GCSE. You, you, okay. I, um, mm. we, I, I did GCSE art, right? How so when I was 16 that? years old, I had a, they call it like a scrapbook. Do yes. you know those things? My scrapbook was so bad, before the exam, I lost it on purpose. And so they had to give me a, a, a grade just for like, okay. Like you, I'm yeah. I said, no, they gave me a, they gave me a B. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's which better was... than I did. <laughs> well, what I out. feel like you've got an advantage. I feel like you're going to be fine. I am an illustrator, not a painter, so. What is the difference between an illustrator and a painter? Illustrator is usually more drawing based, but painters can be illustrators. Illustrators can be painters. I'm just not much of a painter. Okay, so I, I, great. I'm start. so I need to know your story, right? So where, where, do you, let's start, where did you grow up? So I grew up in the middle of nowhere, um, in Cornwall, and then I moved to Devon when I was 14. You were going to be an Olympic swimmer? <laughs> yeah, it sounds ridiculous. It doesn't sound ridiculous. So what, was your, um, what was your stroke? So I did mostly backstroke, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't my favourite. But um, yeah, backstroke was what I was good at. And I literally spent my entire childhood as a competitive athlete. And then when I was like 16, 17, um, just couldn't do it anymore. Had like a bit of a mental health crisis and dropped out of education. Really? Um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't my favourite time in my life. <laughs> Why? Talk, what um, happened? So this is, 16 years old is always a tricky time, I find. Yeah. Because you don't... School can be quite tricky. Mm -hmm. um, kids can be even harder sometimes. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're six foot tall and naturally ginger and you're like 14 years old, it's, it's never going to be a great time. Um, but no, I was training like five hours a day and going to school in between and it was just like too much awesome. pressure, I think, for a teenager. So dropped out and uh, kind of lost all of my like passion and purpose in life. Oh, really? And then... Do you think you had burnout as well? Oh, yeah, big time. Um, but I didn't really know what that was or like what... Like, I don't think conversations around mental health at that time were happening in the same way they are now. So I yeah. just didn't really know what was going on. I thought I was just going to feel like that forever. Um, That's scary, that? that place, isn't Terrifying. it? Terrifying. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't great, but... How did you, how did you get through that? Um, so I ended up kind of getting hospitalised and it was when I was in hospital that I picked up a pencil and just kind of started drawing to pass the time. Um, and yeah, my mind just kind of completely emptied and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really enjoying this. Like maybe I should try and do something with this. Yeah. And um, just haven't really stopped drawing since. Wait, hang on, but this is amazing. So you, you go into hospital yes. and because you're obviously... Not feeling insane. Great. You're not feeling so <laughs> Having good. Having a crisis. But what was it? Was it anxiety? Was it? Um, it was anxiety depressed? and depression. But I just didn't know what that was at that time. Like I didn't really understand what was yeah. going on. Um, and yeah, it was when I was in hospital. Someone sat me down and was like, "Do you know that you have depression?" And I was like, "Oh, that's what it is. Okay." Like, was that was that a relief when you found out when there was something that was labelled, or was that yeah. did it make it scarier? No, I think it was a relief to be like, "Okay, this isn't just how I'm going to feel forever." Like, this is something that can be fixed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also a really scary moment because I remember when I had, I had, I, when I was in my early 20s, right, I had a panic attack and I didn't know what the hell was going oh, on. Oh, they're horrible. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. What is that? It's not, it's not fun at all. I had this panic attack and, you know, typical one, my heart racing, felt like I was having a heart attack, all those kind of things. Took myself to hospital and, <laughs> yeah. And they said, don't worry, you're having a heart attack. They said, you're having a panic attack. Just go home, have a Coca-Cola and you'll be fine. Coca-Cola? Yeah, crazy, Why? right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I went, I went home and um, this painting is so bad. I yeah, can't mine even is, begin. you're just very, it's, very yellow. So mine far. is, okay, I'm just going to go with it. So I went home and... It just never went for about six months. Oh. I felt like I was living in fear. I didn't tell anyone ever because I was too nervous to tell anyone. Um, and it was like a really like terrifying time. Um, and like you, you just don't know when it's going to end. You just think it's going to be like, you're going to be like this forever. You're broken forever, right? Yep, very that. So, so you picked up a, you were in hospital. Yes. And you picked up a paintbrush or a pencil? Not a paintbrush. 
Oh, but you picked up a pencil. <laughs> yeah, just started doodling, just kind of in a like sketchbook, like diary type thing. Um, was not good at drawing at the time, but I was like, hmm, okay, I'm enjoying this. How can I spend as much time as possible doing this? So I ended up getting back into education went to the local college and was like please let me in on your fine art course i know i don't have any work but just let me in and somehow they did um and yeah and now i'm still still doing it and th so do you is there a part of you that sometimes thinks that e that everything that everything happens for a reason that mm. or no do we not think i that? don't know sometimes i'm like yeah okay everything went wrong so that this could all happen but then other times i'm like I don't know. Yeah, I, I suppose I do kind of think that. Not not in the sense that like awful things should happen to people and it's a blessing in disguise, but I think sometimes things don't turn out the way you want because something better is waiting. What what is your inspiration? What do you start? What do you love drawing? How do you find your sort of passion or the things that you want to illustrate? Um, so mostly just people. I find drawing people really interesting. I've tried drawing a lot of different things, but I think people are the most I don't know, interesting thing to draw. And I kind of use it as like a diary, I suppose. I like, yeah, it just start. everything starts as like little doodles and then turns into kind of more finished pieces. This but, is not an accurate representation. No, but explain, of how I but I'm so interested in that because I think that's like, so do you see someone or you like an image of something and then you just start? Sometimes it's like people I've seen, a lot of my drawings are because I never want to offend people by drawing them badly, which I'm sure I will do today. You can't offend me. Um, honestly, try. Give it a go. Because um, if, if you're not offended by my drawing, I don't know, honestly. Oh, dear. Yeah, so I usually either use myself as like a reference point and just kind of doodle until I find something that is working, or I'll go outside and just kind of people watch, but also draw them. But I don't know, people always come and talk to you when you're doing that, so. Really? Oh, yeah. They're like, what are you drawing? You're drawing me. And you go, yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, go away. <laughs> I go into the park, and actually one of my first dates I had with my wife, Aww. she must have thought I was an absolute maniac. Um, I took her into Hyde Park, and I said, sit down here, and we did, I just watched someone paint. It's quite weird. <laughs> someone actually. else paint? Yeah. Did you hire them to be there? No. I they just, were just there? They were just there. They were just quite nice. It's something so relaxing about it. Yeah, it's therapeutic. Definitely, I think. So how would you describe your art what would you Ooh. how would you define it um i guess it's people always say it's distinctive and i'm like i'll take that as a compliment sure um i guess it's often joyful but sometimes it's quite sad um but it's kind of like disguised as quite joyful colors and stuff um yeah i guess quirky weird Quirky with because you 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 paint. I mean, you illustrate a lot about mental health. I do, yes. And how do you uh, how do you show that in your illustration? Because that's quite a hard thing. Because um, for me, mental health is very much like a feeling. But if you're illustrating something, how do you portray the feeling? I think that's the plight of every artist, famously. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, how do I make this abstract thing work on paper? And how do you do that? <laughs> um. I honestly don't know how, like, I don't think it's a conscious thought. It just kind of, I draw and then I'm like, okay, this has this vibe, so let's go with that. And then I'll kind of add bits of text in. Or, I don't know, it kind of depends what mood I'm in on the day. It all, yeah, it's um, not a precise science, definitely. Is it not? I wish it was. It would be much easier if it was. And do you ever start something and then go, oh, it starts as one thing and then becomes something else? Yes, all the time. Really? Yes. Yeah, this painting is, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's not you. I can't. Honestly, this <laughs> one is seen. so bad. It's actually kind of good. This, this one is honestly so uh, shocking. Okay, so... Um, you, it beca you start as one thing, then it becomes another thing. But you, you use a lot of colours. Yes. They are always bright. So even yeah. if they are depicting something which seems could be quite sad, it's always a little. It's also a little bit joyful. I like to think so. I feel like yeah. Then nothing's in absolutes, definitely. And when you hold, on, I'm just going to draw your arm quick. <laughs> just, I almost want to show a quick glance to the camera. Can I do that? Cause I this won't look. I'm not looking. But it's actually the most... I'm checking people's faces. Oh, no! It's the most That's not thing. a good reaction. It's the most shocking. 
And also, you know, what's so exciting, right, is that you are very kindly illustrating a pack number three of loves. I'm so excited. Which is really exciting. And also, um, as I said, it's our, it's our third pack that we've done with an illustrator, and three is my lucky number. So this one better be the best. <laughs> I hope so. Have you, uh, what, what's, what was your ideas behind it? Why did you say yes? Obviously All those I was things. Say yes. Could have um, said no. I, I could have done, but I definitely didn't. No. Um, so I obviously saw like the past two years um, of Love Sweets, and I was, I'm a huge fan of both of the artists that were working on them. Um, and yeah, of course, like it's such an amazing campaign to be a part of. I think it's so nice to do something that I love to do, which is be creative and um, I don't know to make a difference and do some good at the same time. And I guess the inspiration behind it. I'm one of those people who will have an idea and just immediately be like, well, this is the one, we're going with this, no other planning. Um, and it was kind of centered around like community and I don't know, I guess like chosen family, the community you find in like your kind of queer chosen family. But I think a lot of people who aren't LGBTQ can relate to that as well. I don't know what I've done with your hair. I've given you a perm. Oh my God, you got the biggest it's... head I've ever seen in this picture. I don't know what I was going to say, in the picture, right? Not in real life. <laughs> no, like, you're beautiful. <laughs> this picture is not a good <laughs> reflection at all. Oh. But what do you mean to talk about? So in the, in the queer community, you, you talk about you find your family. What do yeah. you mean by that? Yeah, I feel like, you know, a lot, of, a lot of LGBTQ people, for whatever reason, maybe have difficult relationships with their family. Some people don't, and that's great. But I feel like there's such a kind of special bond between like groups of friends who that was really loud um mm -hmm. groups of friends who are queer and kind of support each other in the way that a family might it's yeah it's lovely and you know did you find your community and yeah it was one of i mean i think when you've been growing up and kind of feeling like, don't not looking I'm, trying, not, I'm just looking at <laughs> trying to do, do a nose ring and it's oh. like a, it looks like a big bogey <laughs> Honestly, it's really not good. Okay. Honestly, this is so My bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. On the floor. I'm so sorry no. about this. What are we saying? So about you finding your community. Oh yeah, I think you know when you when you've kind of grown up feeling maybe like, I don't know. I feel like it's quite a universal experience among kind of LGBTQ people. You feel like you don't quite fit in, but you're not exactly sure why. And then when you finally find a kind of community of people, and you're like, ah, oh, okay, like these are my people. I finally fit in. I, I don't know, there's something so special about that. That is something, that is special. What age were you when that happened, do you think? Honestly, it was probably when I left you. I mean, kind of when I was at uni, but when I left uni, I think I've got such a nice community around me now, and it's just, yeah, it's lovely. And it's incredibly supportive. That, yeah. That's what, you know, it's so amazing that it's... And we all need, our, we all need a tribe, we all need a community, we exactly. all need to feel connected in certain ways, right? And that's what's amazing about it. Yeah. Have you, um, so you've tried the love sweets? <laughs> oh, I ate like four packs. Okay, great. <laughs> you, when, you're, when you're coming up, oh my God, hold on one second, this paint. It's really hard, yeah. right? <laughs> and when you're coming up with the idea for the pack, mm -hmm. are you, do you get nervous about doing it or do you just kind of go, okay, I'm just going to knock this out of the park and not really care? Uh... So I feel like a lot of art, a lot of, Art comes from like not caring. It's being. I heard. A, I heard a description once, which is so amazing, and I weirdly think it was Harry Styles. Um, my mum's favourite person. Oh my god, <laughs> my favourite person. Honestly, he's unbelievable. <laughs> um, he said, "When you get to a place, he says art, art is amazing. When you get to a place, you don't know if it's good and you don't know if it's bad." I know that this is bad. Yeah, I know. This is <laughs> Pretty bad. sure. But you'll get to a place. That's when something really exciting happens yeah. because you're kind of in this really artistic place that you don't really know what's good and what's not good, and that feels like you're pushing boundaries. Do you find that or no? Um, I. That's a really good and interesting question. I definitely. There are points where I've been like, I just need to accept that, like the things that I don't feel that I love about my work, other people might really like. And I think when you stop caring about that and stop trying to make a perfect I'm saying this while looking at this which yeah. is but when you stop trying to make something that's like completely perfect and you just kind of accept it as it is I feel like that is always better for me I don't know and I'd like to find life as well oh, do you real, but it does do you not deep. think do you not think that's what defines life like 
exactly. As soon as you let go of art and you allow yourself to not care what other people think and you just go with what you're feeling, that's when you get to the perfect place. But that also what, it, what life is about. As soon as we stop caring what other people think and we become really our sort of true selves, authentic selves, that's when we're most happy and most fulfilled. Cool. Philosopher Jamie. Don't worry about <laughs> that. Have you done? I mean, sh mm, yeah. sure, why not? I finished mine. And honestly, this is a complete and utter masterpiece. I mean, I've just made you really yellow. I'm really sorry. The colour palette was limited, you know, under pressure. Can I ask you one more question as well? Go on. What does plant power mean to you? Ooh, good question. Um, oh, no. I've got it. I've got it. It's fine, we're good. We ignore that. What does plant power mean to me? I mean, I'm a huge, I grew up in the countryside, so I'm a huge nature person. Mm. I will, yeah, if I'm ever having a bad day, you'll find me in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been like vegetarian for, I don't know, maybe 15 years and kind of. Really? No, how old am I? Maybe 12 years. <laughs> and like plant based mostly for the past five or so. So it's a big part of my life. Also, all of my tattoos are botanical themed. They are. I'm a plant person. So yeah. why did you, what, what was the choice for going vegan and uh, well, going vegetarian then vegan? I think I went more, not vegan, but just plant based. So like I'll eat cheese occasionally, but I, I don't know. I'm just trying to live more compassionately, less impact on the earth. I love I that. I try to. <laughs> that's insane. I love that. No, you, I can against that's what we want to do. We, 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 we I, when I started it, my business partner and I, we wanted to make the best sweet possible. And we thought by removing all those nasties from the sweets, we'd be able to do that. And so we still don't understand why other sweets have gelatin in them because we think that a vegan sweet tastes better than one with gelatin in it. Oh, exactly. Okay. My career Are you ready is for be this? over. It's okay. not good. Are you ready for this? Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. It's not good. I'm sorry. I look, I'm a, I'm a, look almost I've made regal you in that. I look regal in that. We'll go with that. Regal's fine. <laughs> that is one of the worst oh. things you can possibly... Wait, hang on a second. I want to do that. Your one looks far better than mine. What is your favourite bit about the packet? Oh, um, oh, I don't know. That's a hard question. This I, person here sleeping. I mean, that some of the people are kind of based off of my friends. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Can so who? Do? So we got to call. Can we shout them out or no? No. We got to keep them. Okay, yeah, we got to keep gotta, them. GDPR. Come on. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they know who they are. So it's based off different friends of mine and kind of like mishmash versions of them. Um, so I think the sleeping person. The yeah. sleeping person. And these hearts mixed. here are amazing. Oh. And also, do you want even more exciting? This is a new recipe as well. I didn't know that. It's a it's oh. a better new recipe, so the whole thing is going to be amazing. So you were going to be you were, did you ever think about the Olympics? <laughs> yes, you did. Spent you, yeah. Back in the, I went to the twenty twelve Olympic trials. What? They obviously, didn't get. It. Wait, hang it's, on. Is it, you went, my secret past life. You went to the twenty twelve trials. Yes. Doing backstroke. Yes. Weirdly, my um my manager at the moment she was a swimmer as well, oh. and she used to train two hours before school in the morning. Yep. Two that, hours before. Two, two hours, hours after. after. It was, yeah, it was real intense. For a long really time. intense. Mm -hmm. Hence the mental health crisis. Because it was just so much. <laughs> yeah, I think that and a lot of other things. I think also kind of not quite accepting the fact that maybe part of the reason I was feeling, I don't know, not great was not feeling like I fitted in. A lot of that came down to not really understanding and maybe being in denial about like my gender identity mm. and being like LGBTQ as well. And that's what's amazing. I suppose also what's amazing we should mention is that a we you know the packet is, we sponsor AKT with this. So every packet sold a donation goes to AKT yes. charity, Albert Kennedy Trust, and they do incredible things for the community. Yes. Um, and I think that's just amazing. The fact that um, you know coming from someone who. Uh, is straight and doesn't understand how tricky that is with it when it comes to coming out to families and friends and other people. It must be really hard and a lot of people yeah. have a really horrible, tricky time with it. Yeah, I feel like so many young people who are kind of coming out to their families, because it's usually, you know, people are figuring out who they are through their teenage years, which is a tricky time anyway. And mm. if they don't have that support at home, 
it can be really, really tough. So the work that Albert Kennedy Trust do around kind of supporting young LGBTQ people through that kind of period and beyond is just incredible. And I'm so, I don't know, it's so special to be able to make art, which brings me joy, and also be able to give back through projects like this. B, thank you so much. Thank you I'll so give you much. A hug. Oh, of course. Thank, thank you so you. much. That's so kind. And thanks for my beautiful painting. And thank you for my beautiful painting. It's going to be on eBay. <laughs> it won't sell. <laughs> Signed. <laughs>